you very much. The sound crew back there does amazing work. Really appreciate it. We're glad you could join us today. This, it's a warm Sunday to worship the Lord, but uh, it's always good to worship him together. So uh, we have one announcement. Uh, on the 18th of July, Steve and Lorraine Mann, who are Pete and Molly's, Pete's brother and sister-in-law, Molly's brother and sister-in-law, are going to be uh, coming to visit with us. We supported them through Wycliffe Bible for a lot of years. They've since retired, but I believe they volunteer still back at Wycliffe. And what we would like to do uh, is have a 9.30, just a little reception for them. And so if you, uh, if you remember Steve and Lorraine and can come at 9.30 on the 18th of July, that would be really good so we could renew those family ties with them. Uh, there, as far as I know, there are no other announcements unless somebody has one from out there in the, in the pews. Okay, then let's go to our call to worship. Today it's from Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make glad by your deeds, Lord. You, excuse me, you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. And with that, we'll let you get going. It is a great day to worship together. Let's stand as we sing. The Lord is so worthy of all that we can give him um, and so much more. And I've just really been focusing, thinking a lot about how he is so worthy. And this song came to mind as I thought about what we could sing together this morning. So we're going to sing um, how he is worthy of every song we can ever sing.
thank you for this time to behold you, Lord, to be surrounded by our brothers and sisters and um, just be here with our family, Lord, to lift your name high in song. Thank you for centuries and centuries, for all of eternity, Lord, um, 
people have been praising you and singing your goodness. And thanks that we can be a part of that this morning together. Thanks for the truth and the lyrics that we just sung, God, and I pray that it would sink deep into our hearts as we live our lives for you. Thank you so much for Ted, for the message you've given him. Thanks for his faithfulness to you, and um, we just pray over him this morning, God, that you would speak through him to us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you enjoying your first week of summer? <laughs> wow. But it's good to be back. Deb and I had a great couple, almost couple weeks. We went down to South Carolina, uh, Lexington, to visit with uh, one of our grand, well, four, one of our four daughters um, and son-in-laws to uh, visit with them and then went down to Myrtle Beach and spent a little time on the ocean. So that was good and kind of get rejuvenated again. So um, I wasn't on my tractor, but I was on, my, I was on the, the beach, the seashore, fishing, I'm trying to fish at any rate, looking around. But I do have a message for you this morning that God had put on my heart. And so uh, if you don't mind, let's just bow in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We know it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, able to just get into us through both the bone and the marrow of our very being, into our souls that you will change us to become more and more like Jesus each and every day. And so Lord, help us to hear your word clearly and to act upon it. And Lord, we thank you we ask these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I hope the fans aren't because of a lot of hot air that's going to be coming out this morning. I hope, I hope that's not the case. But what God put on my heart this morning and what I want to share with you is a topic that I think folks, many folks, might have a little difficulty with, a little problem with to understand what it is, or better yet, who it is, and how it works. And that's the Holy Spirit. And when we talk about God as the Father, we talk about Jesus as the Son, and we talk about the Holy Spirit, and we try to get our hands around. And I have to admit, I'm one, it's, it's, it's a challenge for me to, to get around this third entity of the Trinity. And so what I thought this morning is I'd like to share, there are many Bible verses and passages, both Old Testament and New Testament, that talk about God's Holy Spirit. And so what I'd like to do this morning is kind of gather a couple of those verses together, share them with you this morning, and hopefully help you to have a better understanding of the Holy Spirit and how he works in our lives and really to break it down into a simple explanation. Is that fair? You with me? Great. Well, first, I came up with this concept of really to understand the Holy Spirit, you need to understand the workings of a radio. Now, just be with me. Bear with me here. Bear with me. In order for a radio to work, you need three things. You need a transmitter, you need a receiver, and you need some power, you know, electricity, to make it work. And the general concept is, through the transmitter, you have the electrons being made to go up and down, to jump up and down, to be able to transmit through the air at the sound of light. And then on the receiving end, there's a receiver antenna that's accepting those vibrating electrons to be able to receive the radio signal and to really produce that sound. And for those of us who have been around for a while, you remember the AM, FM, right? AM amplitude modified, FM frequency modified. I know some of the younger folks, they just go, Scan, we're done, right? But those of us who remember, 
you know, the 12 channel, 12 transistor radio like this, remember we had to figure out whether it was AM or FM. So there's different modulations and each of those modulations have a channel or a band. And so that's the concept. But now let's take a look at how a radio really works. So um, I brought a state-of-the-art radio. Yeah, really. So what's the first thing we need to do? If we're going to listen to our radio, we need to turn it on, right? So we'll turn it on. Second thing we need to do, especially with the old-fashioned radios, is that we need to turn it on, but we also need to tune it in, right? So let me do something here. Okay. But some of you might be able to hear this. So I turned it on, I've tuned it in, but we got to turn it up so we can listen to what God is saying to us. So you get the concept. We need to turn it on, we need to tune it in, and we need to turn it up. That's the same concept of the Holy Spirit. But before we go in that direction, let me ask you a few questions. Let me ask you a few questions. Kind of get you thinking. Even though this radio, I turned it off, is no longer on, are there still radio waves still being transmitted out there? Yes. Yes. Regardless of whether we have the radio on or off, those radio waves are being transmitted 24-7, 365, and 366 days a year in a leap year. So no matter what we do, those radio waves are still being transmitted. Do I need to turn the radio on? Well, yes. I think that's a pretty simple answer. If we're going to listen and we want to hear our favorite music or our favorite program, we need to do something. We need to turn it on. And so that's step number two. And then if we just turned it on, I guess maybe if we were lucky, we might hit the right channel or the right band. But normally we have to search. We have to go look. And again, for the old fashioned, we would, we would go through the channel, turn the dial till we finally got a lot of static, right? And then finally we get to the channel we want. And so then we tune it in. And then for those of us who maybe want to hear it a little louder, we turn it up. We got to turn it up to listen to that favorite program. But I want you to remember one thing. Here's a little note. We need to select a channel or a band that we're going to listen to. But we need to be careful because, and I'm sure you know this, on the radio, public radio for sure, there are different channels, there are different bands. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll call certain bands of wholesome, wholesome, if you will, um, clean, clean and wholesome, broadcasting programs, and they might be, they don't have to be all Christian, but they might be your Christian programs. They may be good educational programs, right? They may be stuff that we could learn from. Uh, it might be also uh, informational information that might be emergencies, right? We've got a weather uh, situation that we need to be aware of. So we use the radio in that capacity on that band, on that channel, the weather channel, to be able to get information. And then there's some channels, bands that are neutral. And that might be sports or just information where you're just getting facts, right? Just keeping it neutral, no opinions, no uh, bias, no spinning of any type of message. It's just facts. Then unfortunately, unfortunately, there are also some bands or channels that what I just call unclean, unwholesome. And you can find them. They're on, they're on our public radios. And so one of the things that I want to encourage you as we continue with this message is, yes, you need to be tuning the radio 
in, but you need to be careful of what you tune in because that makes a big difference. The last question, the last question, do we need to turn the radio up? Well, I say that with a caution. I understand we want to make sure we're not doing damage to our hearing, but for the most part, we do need to turn things up. We need to hear the radio clearly. We need to be able to discern what that message is, or for certainly if it's an emergency situation, right, we need to know what to do. If we need to evacuate, if we need to take shelter in the case of a high wind or tornado or hurricane or something like that, we need to make sure that we hear it. So even though the radio waves are constantly being transmitted on different waves and different channels, we need to turn our radio, our radio on, we need to tune it in, and we need to turn it up to channels that we know God will want us to be listening to. And that that is, my friends, is, is the key to understanding what the Holy Spirit is all about. Now you may say, hey Ted, wait a minute, I got, I got where you're going, I, I hear about the radio, but what does that have to do with the Holy Spirit? That's a good question. And hopefully this morning, I'll be able to shed some light. And really what I want to do is I want to challenge your theology this morning. I know you're all readers of God's Word. And so this morning, I want to challenge your reading. I want to challenge your studying, your meditating, and your memorizing. Not because what I say, but because what God says to you. So all of this, even though I'm sharing it this morning, Take it home. Think about it. Pray over it. Let me know what you think. These were ideas that God put in my heart to help me understand how the Holy Spirit is working in my life and your life. So here's what I came up with as I studied the Old and New Testaments that helped me, concepts that God shared on my heart that helped me and hopefully, hopefully will help you to get a better understanding of how the Holy Spirit works. First, God created a receiver in us. When we were born, God put a desire, a need to seek him, to follow him, to be able to have an intimate relationship with him. And to allow this to happen, to have this relationship, to have this fellowship, to have this intimate, this intimate walk with God, he inserted a receiver into each other of us. Now at birth, that receiver is not turned on. And you could call the receiver something else if you want to call it the seed, the desire. But the concept is there is something that God put in us that he wants to allow us to seek him, to be able to follow him. At birth, we're not aware of it. We don't see this power. We don't see this receiver, this Holy Spirit. We're not aware of it. But God still, even though we're not aware, put it in us. But as I said, at this stage, at birth and at young, growing up, until we become of age, if you will, and coming of age can be different for different people, so it's not a set age, it's just when an individual realizes that God is important in his life or her life. But at that early stage, up until then, God has not turned on that receiver. But when the power and the spirit is turned on in us by God, we are now ready to tune in. We're able to tune into that power in that transmitted spirit. Just like we would a radio. 
And then when our receiver has been turned on and we're tuned in to that power, it needs to be turned up. It needs to be turned up so that we can hear God's word and truth clearly. God speaks to each and every one of us in our and his own way. To meet your specific need, but we need to hear it. You need to hear it clearly and carefully. So, how do we turn up or turn on, tune in, and turn up the Holy Spirit, just like a radio? I'd like to share five things with you this morning. Some thoughts that I want you to consider, take home, think about, pray about, discuss. Got some questions, I'd be happy. Come back and chat with me, challenge me. I really would appreciate that. So, the first one, we need to turn it on. We need to turn the Spirit on. God's power and Holy Spirit will be turned on when we make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the defining moment. That's the becoming of age, if you will, at least in my mind. When you decide to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and to turn away from your sin, and let God control, Jesus control your life on a daily basis, then you're turning on the Spirit. When you tell God that you're a sinner, and that you tell God that you want to turn away from your sins, to repent, then you're turning on the Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 tells it better than I can. Listen to the words. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. The gospel of your salvation. That's the truth. The gospel. The good news. That you and I are saved upon accepting and believing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When you believed, you were marked in him. Him being Jesus. Marked in him, Jesus. With a seal The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, you and I, to the praise of his glory. To the praise of his glory. So when you acknowledge that God's Son died for your sins on the cross and rose again in victory over sin and death, And when you invite Jesus to come into your heart and life and take control, to live that abundant life that he wants us to live, and when you tell Jesus that you trust him, that you want him to be the driver in the driver's seat of your life's vehicle, and accept and follow him as Lord and Savior, that's when that receiver is turned on. Some of you may have had that experience. You might remember as it was yesterday when you made that decision and you felt that power coming into your life. That's what it is. And equally important is that the power, God's power, that is needed to transmit his message to us and his truth to us is available to us and will always be available to us. So not only the first time, but always. That power exists here this morning, today, tomorrow, and forever. Don't forget that. Just as the radio waves are still no matter whether we have it turned on or not, are still being transmitted. God's power is still and always being transmitted in our lives to empower us. To empower us. Romans 8, 11 tells us, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life your mortal bodies because of the spirit his spirit who lives in you 
So that's turning it on. Second would be, second would be tuning it in. And the Holy Spirit gets tuned in when you read the Bible every day to get a better understanding and idea of Jesus. It gets tuned in when you spend time with God in prayer, both listening and speaking. It's a two-way conversation. And it gets tuned in when you are freely able to share Jesus with others. It's an opportunity to share your testimony. But to be able to tune in, we need to be able to read God's word consistently. We need to be studying God's word faithfully. We need to be memorizing God's word. And we need to be meditating on God's word. And we also need to spend time in prayer. So if we want to tune the Holy Spirit in and get focused and turn that channel or, or, or get that channel that we want, we need to pray for God's direction and guidance and we need to follow God's word through obedience. In other words, the way I kind of captured is we need, when we, when we tune in to God by developing a lifestyle that is in tune with God. We tune into God by developing a lifestyle that is in tune with God. 2 Timothy 3:16 reveals this truth very clearly to us. All scripture, all scripture is, is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then third, we need to be turning it up. We need to be turning the Holy Spirit up. And the Holy Spirit gets turned up when, first, we worship, we fellowship, and serve with others, brothers and sisters, in a God-word preaching church, just like Franklinville First Baptist Church, just like this church. As I've been with you for almost 11 months, almost 12 months, I have seen fellowship. And I know even in light of COVID and the restrictions and the frustrations, you have been faithful for fellowship. You have been faithful for servantship. You have been faithful to reach those who need. Acts 2, Acts 2, 41, 44. Those who accepted his message, now this was Peter's message. Okay, this is Peter's message. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So got it? Fellowship, teaching, breaking of bread, communion, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. I just kind of want to break about that. Now they're giving credit, and I'm not changing God's word by the apostles, but you know where the power was. Don't forget where the power came from to enable these apostles to enable you and I to do these very things as well. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All believers were together and had everything in common. That describes this church, the fellowship, the friendship, the servantship, that I've experienced. And second, the Holy Spirit gets turned up when as Jesus ambassadors, when as Jesus ambassadors in a needy world, you and I, you and I demonstrate our life, not just hearing the word, but doing the word, by disturbing our life and concern for others, by demonstrating our love for others, by reaching out to those needy, those who are in need, whatever, physical, 
mental, spiritual, loss of loved ones. We need to reach out to them. We need to hold them. We need to hug them. And I know we're in COVID. I got all of that. But the old-fashioned way is we need to hug and kiss them. That's what the old tradition was. To show the love, to reach out in fellowship and friendship, to be able to show our love. We need to be turning it up by being the salt of a bland, tasteless world. And to be that light in this corrupt and dark world. Romans 5.5 tells us this, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love, God's love had poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You've been given. We've been given the Holy Spirit. An incredible amount of power. And it gets turned up when you embody the fruit of the Spirit. Take a look at Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. The Holy Spirit gets turned up when you use God-given spirits and abilities that God had given you to get the job that God wants you to do. We're all different. We're all ministers in this world. Wherever we are, wherever we go, however young or however old we may be, we are all ministers in Christ, the ministers of the gospel, the good news. And our benefit is other people's benefits. Our gifts are to be used for other people. Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 16, there are different kinds of gifts. We're talking spiritual gifts. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. And the fourth thought is we need to be turning. We need to be turning the Holy Spirit in, but we need to be turning the world out. We need to be tuning it out. We need to learn to tune out the world influences that would affect our mind, our heart, and our spirits. Because these influences, these worldly influences, these secular influences, rob us of our personal walk with God and that intimate relationship that we have with him and with other people. 1 John 2.16 tells us straight as it is for everything, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And I like another translation, my New American standard says boastful, Boastful pride of life. I love that adjective because that's exactly right. When we have something we're prideful, we boast about it. Most of us do anyway. It comes not from the Father, but from the world. And Proverbs 4.23 warns us, heed the warning. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. And then we have in the New Testament from Philippians, verse, chapter 4, verse 7. This is what that verse promises us. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus. I found it interesting as I continued my study that the Hebrew translation of guard, of guard means to keep above all keepings to keep above all keepings so if all you guard that you find important 
are your marriage, your family, your bank account, your car, your boat, your truck, your house. What God says, above those, above those, guard your heart and your mind and your thoughts. That's more important. And we need to do that with villages. And then here's the fifth and last thought for your consideration. As we turn it on, we tune it in, we turn it up, we turn out the world, we tune in God, right? We need to be transmitting it out. We need to be transmitting that power of the Holy Spirit out to others. You see, not only did God install in us a receiver, he installed in us a transmitter as well. Just like the radio. Just like the radio. And so to be able to receive God's word and to transmit it through the transmitter, that power that God has given us. I love it when Paul talks about the power of the resurrection. Now, I don't even know what that means. I can't get my hands around it. I have seen things like nuclear power. I've seen electric power. I've seen fires and wind power, right? I mean, that's my limit. But the resurrection power, that's got to be awesome. That's just got to be something that would be infinite, uncontainable in my mind. All of that so that we and others can have that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. They can enjoy that power of that Holy Spirit that we have today. I think Acts 1, verse 8, I'm sure you're very familiar with it, but it, that verse tells us clearly. And it's not just an if or a maybe. It is a fact and a promise. But you... But you, you and I, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Well, that's mind-boggling. I'm thinking Franklinville, Springville, a little South Carolina trip, right? I mean, that's about the extent. No, 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 no. God's thinking much bigger than that. Much bigger, much bigger. But that verse, that single verse, is a transmittal of two great items that God has shared with us. The first item is the transmittal of the Great Commission. And you know what the Great Commission is. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. We are to go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then second, the transmittal of the great commandment found in Matthew 27, 22, verses 37 through 39. And what is that? That we should love our, what? We should love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And Jesus added, and the second would be that we were to love our neighbor as ourselves. For many of the other Old Testament, New Testaments, as you read, you'll reveal that the workings of the Holy Spirit, we learn that the Holy Spirit is God. He's God. God in an infinite power. There is only one God. We know that. We confess that as part of the Apostles' Creed when we take communion. But he is the third divine person of the Trinity. He grieves. He knows. He's eternal. He encourages. He gives understanding to each and every one of us. He gives us peace. He gives us comfort. And he directs. Better than any GPS would ever provide direction to you. He's a compass and a road map. And he can be prayed to. 
He is the very God that is living in each and every one of us here, today, tomorrow, until the time God calls us back home. Now here's the last final thought. Our English word, spirit, S-P-I-R-I-T. S for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. P for power, the power of the Holy Spirit. R for receiver, to receive the power. And T, transmitter, to be able to transmit that power. Oh, I, I, that's you and me. That's you and me. Friends, the power of God through the Holy Spirit is transmitted to those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, God's Son, His Lord and Savior, so that we can turn on, we can turn on that power, we can tune in that power, we can turn up that power, we can tune out the world's power and influence. And we can transmit that resurrection power that's living in us to those that in need. If you truly believe, believe in what God has shared with you this morning, give me a shout amen. 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 stand and sing together again. My keyboard doesn't seem to be on. There we go.
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to come here in worship, fellowship, servantship, love. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. And we just ask that you help us to be able to turn on, to tune in, to turn up your spirit, and Lord, that we would learn to turn out the world and we would able to transmit, to send that power that you have given each and every one of us to share it with those around us in need. We thank you, Lord. And so now in the name of he who is able to keep you from falling, in the name of the Father and the Son and the power of of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Have a great week.